Hello, today I have a talk called A Clear Path, and here's the short version. A clear path is provided for everyone. Obstacles are mirages that melt away. In reality, you are only giving and receiving love at all times, but you have chosen to see this differently. Choosing to see reality differently is why time and space were made by you. But just as easily, time and space can be turned over to what you are to guide you back to the full awareness of what you and all are. There's always something easy and relaxed and innocent that connects all of us at all times. It is your choice to tune into this and to allow it to guide you and all you see. Okay, so if you want to stick around, we'll go into more detail. A clear path is provided for everyone. This helps if we're worried about anybody. Instead of the worry, we can focus on the clear path. And focusing on that clear path um, may make clear to us ways in which we can be of assistance and that'll be easy to carry that assistance out. So we don't carry assistance out, helpfulness out from a place of worry and obligation and fear we carried out because we were inspired and it's, it's very straightforward to just follow that. And we spend a lot of our time just kind of digging down <laughs> to that place in us where we have connection to this inspiration more and more consistently. But it's, it's very much worth that effort to keep questioning and setting aside the ego thoughts and focusing on a, um, a thought of peace and truth to help us dig down to that place where we keep turning to inspiration, then we can start to live from the inspiration. So one way to focus on what's here for us is to say, eternal holiness abides in me. That's from A Course in Miracles, my usual. Um, eternal holiness abides in me. Eternal holiness abides in you. That's what we are. That's what's connected about us. That's what I can put my attention on. So I keep taking my attention off the things of this world and I put it on the eternal holiness, maybe only for a couple of seconds. But then that gives me the baseline and the foundation for thoughts of inspiration to come to me and for that to be my day. My, my day is guided by thoughts from love, thoughts of inspiration. So a clear path is provided for everyone. A clear path is provided for you. And it's, it's that pathway paved with thoughts of inspiration that tell you very clearly what to do and what to say. And the only time to interrupt is when you don't feel good because suddenly you're on a path of desperation <laughs> and we're used to these paths. These paths of desperation feel normal to us. So our work every day is inviting us ourselves to relax into that path of inspiration and then we're able to follow it because the inspiration is obvious and clear. Obstacles are mirages that melt away. So anything that looks like obstacle, you'll notice you have thoughts about it, and that's where you can go to work on the thoughts about what seems like an obstacle, on any thought associated with any worry um, connected to what looks to you like an obstacle. And then those inspired thoughts come, and we follow them, and the mirages melt away. The obstacles are not the real thing. The peace we all are together, that's the real thing. So we learn to focus more and more consistently on this peace and, and we have a motivation for focusing there and putting our attention there and understanding it shared by all of us, not by some of us or just is possessed by one of us. It's all peace is always shared by all of us. It's always the true nature of all of us. So when we focus on that piece, we're finally focusing on the true nature of the one we're thinking about. If we're thinking desperation, worry, fear thoughts about, or anger thoughts about someone we call else, we're forgetting their true nature of peace. And refocusing on their true nature, no matter how violent or whatever, they might look on the surface, duplicitous, whatever it is, um, focusing on their true nature actually brings the thoughts of inspiration to us. We're in every situation to be truly helpful. 
we're in every situation to recognize our divine siblings as what they are and the thoughts of inspiration make that obvious to us and tell us how to be truly helpful. So the way that ego guilts us and fears us into being helpful, we can that can go in the garbage, that's okay. Because there's a true source of helpfulness here and it can inspire you to action in the world. And it knows much more about everybody and everything than you ever would. And so we can trust that and that's what gets uncovered as we take time to focus on our shared and eternal holiness, our shared and eternal peace, those thoughts from spirit get made obvious to us and then we can follow them. And as we allow those thoughts to get made obvious to us, we allow those thoughts to get obvious to everyone, made obvious to everyone we call other. So that's how that works. Excuse me. In reality, you are only giving and receiving love at all times, but you have chosen to see this differently. So in reality, you're just being. You're just peaceful being forever, and so is everybody. And so if you look at a multiplicity of beings seeming to interact, all they're doing, it's very simple, they're just giving, giving and receiving love. And you don't even have to put that into a form. That's it's just what they do. If you, they don't even breathe. But if you think of them breathing, they're just breathing love all the time. Now we seem to see a world of time and space. So we've chosen to see this differently. And whatever I see, it's my drawing on the surface of this eternal love that's always being given and received. So whatever being I seem to be interacting with, That being is only innocently giving and receiving love at all times. But I may have put a different drawing on top of that being, my my egoic scribble. And I'm not seeing their being. I'm seeing the person. (laughs) I'm seeing the projection of fear. I can also choose to see differently in another direction. So choosing to see reality differently is why time and space were made by you. But just as easily, time and space can be turned over to what you are to guide you back to the full awareness of what you and all are. So every moment during the day that I feel any contraction, tension, or disturbance, I'm trying to hold on to the death-oriented sense of time and space. Of Time and space was made to lead to the destination of death. <laughs> That's real cheery. <laughs> but when we turn, as we inevitably do, this is how this story ends. We turn our invention of time and space over to what we really are, over to spirit, and it leads to life eternal. So whenever I feel stress or tension today, I can take my invention of time and space, admit I don't know anything about anything, I don't know what I'm doing as a person, give the whole thing to spirit and say, just show me, just make my part obvious, and I will carry it out. Eternal holiness abides in me. Let's remember what's real. Eternal holiness abides in you. Let's remember what's real. Let's remember together. So there is always something easy and relaxed and innocent that connects all of us at all times. It is your choice to tune into this, like a radio station, and to allow it to guide you and all you see. So the important part about it is that this radio station of innocence can guide all I see. It's just, I've believed so many ego thoughts that I've forgotten this is possible. This is the remedy that brings me back to myself, is to allow all I see to be in alignment with this eternal holiness, this harmlessness. And it it is up to me. And it seems like the things of this world are so real and fixed and unchangeable and flawed, but none of that is the truth. Eternal holiness is the truth. All all of us at all times, underneath the scribble of fear, I've put on top of that holiness. So I stop trying to make sense of time and space, the scribble of fear I've projected upon love. I stop trying to make sense of it. I can't really make positive or negative sense of it. But here's spirit, and spirit can guide me through this experience and give me every thought I have, 
therefore causing every action and word that seems to come from this person, and also, eventually, <laughs> as I really get it, from everyone and everything I encounter, and then the world becomes harmless, because it becomes a reflection of what we are. We are together, all of us, always shared. You're not harmlessness as a separate entity. You're always harmlessness shared in connection with everyone and everything. And as we learn to focus on that, that's what we also learn to see in front of us and around us. Okay, so hope that helps and happy healing to you today.